Welcome everyone to our third homeschool boot camp this summer. I'm super excited. Uh, last week we did two awesome homeschool boot camps, and if you missed them, the replay is already up on my Facebook page at They Call Me Blast on uh, Facebook, They Call Me Blast blog, and also on my new YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, you can just search for They Call Me Blast and you're gonna find our brand new channel there. I think we only have 340 subscribers. So you guys can go there, like and subscribe. That would be a big help for us. Um, we're trying to get this YouTube thing going. But believe it or not, I'm okay doing Facebook Lives and Zoom Lives like this. But I panic completely when I hear the word YouTube. So <laughs> pray for me. I need, I need some deliverance. Um, so today we are going to talk about the do's and don'ts of homeschooling. And we're going to talk about all those mistakes that we make when we start homeschooling. And even later on, like four years later, three years later, <laughs> some people 20 years later, we're still making the same mistakes. And um, we're going to talk about how to fix it as well. So bear with me. I know that a lot of the mistakes that you're going to hear uh, about, you're going to go like, oh, I'm right there. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> That's why I wrote it. I've done them all. So <laughs> just. Still trying to overcome a lot of them, you guys. But uh, I think I think you're gonna enjoy today. I think it's going to help you to identify a few things that you're still doing wrong, um, and realizing that oops, that's why I'm having a hard time. That's why I'm struggling. And I think that the do's we're really gonna add add a lot of new ideas or or just you know some common sense things that you can add to your homeschool to make things better in your homeschool. So you guys know that we have the chat box there and you guys can ask questions anytime. I'm gonna try to get the questions at the end. Sorry if my uh, video is kind of shaking a little bit. Living in an RV, it's like, uh, you know, feeling an earthquake <laughs> every day, all day. <laughs> Nothing is very solid and stable here. So if the kids move in their beds, it's going to shake you a little bit, just to let you know. But we love our lives and we love living in an RV. We love the freedom that we have to pay so much less for housing expenses. And um, let me tell you why I love the most. I can clean this place in five minutes. <laughs> So it doesn't take long to clean, which I love, love, love. And we, we just have a much more relaxed life. We don't, we're not uh, panicking, having to work two, three jobs just to pay off bills and pay off mortgage or rent or things like that. So um, it's a big, big change for us. Tatiana, you have sound. Yay. Okay. Awesome. So let's start that. I have my notes here with me. So I'll be looking at my notes. Hopefully, uh, you're still going to feel like I'm still looking at you while I read my notes here. But otherwise, you know how distracted I get so easily. So I'm just going to try to focus as much as I can. Um, so, so this 30 do's and don'ts of homeschooling really will help you to improve your homeschool this year. Uh, but make that little list. And maybe I can create a principal and send it to you. Let's see if I can. Pull that off because right now this week I'm I'm really working a lot getting stuff ready for the homeschool sisterhood because it starts on Thursday. But if I have any extra time at all, I'll try to pull together a printable and give you guys as a checklist. So uh, let's go straight to the point. <laughs> no bluffs. <laughs> this is just like plain practical stuff. Okay, um, pick the tips that you think it speaks to you the most to implement, do not try to do them all at the same time because you know that it, that's not how um, we can actually implement anything, right? You get one or two things, you implement those things, and then maybe a, a few weeks into implementing those first things, you can go and add a little bit more. But basically what I'm gonna talk about today is everything that I wish I had known since the beginning, but no one told me. That's what it is. So I think it took me about three and a half years 
to find out what I was actually doing. And three and a half years is a long time. It's a long, painful, lonely road to be on and to still feel, um, you know, you're lacking confidence, that you still feel lost, you still don't know what you're doing. Um, by the time that actually I start figuring out what I was doing, my kids hated me and we hated homeschooling. Um, but we knew that we had no other option. Sending our kids to public school was not an option for us. Sending our kids to private school was not an option for us because we never had the money for it. And we just had to learn how to do it right and persevere. That's what we needed to do. And I'm really glad that I persevered, that I did not give up because if I had given up, I don't know where we would be today, honestly. I'm so glad I just pressed on. And, and out of all of those the painful uh, seasons of homeschooling of my life and, and not burning out completely like I did four years ago. That's how this blog came about. And this is how this community started. You know, it didn't start it because uh, somebody was perfect and did everything perfect and, you know, just wanted to rub it on other mom's face. It started because somebody who's totally messed up, messed up everything and and as, you know, as I learned how to fix my mistakes, I was like, you know what? I can't let other moms go through three, four years of making mistakes like I did. What if I put it together? What if I start talking about, it? what if I can really help moms not to burn out the way that I did and hate homeschool, um, you know, four years later and regret the idea of even, you know, starting in a sense. So what, what if I can't do that? And and you guys know a little bit of the story of how I hate writing. <laughs> I have to whisper when I say that here, guys. I hate writing. Um, but I still do it anyways because <laughs> I need to. And I just wanted to reach out to the homeschool mom's hearts and minister to them and encourage them and let them know if I could have crossed over that big mountain and all those obstacles, and if I could find a place of homeschooling where I'm peaceful, I'm confident, um, I really love, love doing what I do. My kids love homeschooling, then they could do it too. So basically that's how we got here. All right. So the number one do of um, a successful homeschool is that um, you as a homeschool mom need to put your oxygen mask first you need to put your oxygen mask first. You've all been on the plane before, and so, or so I hope, uh, and you know that the flight attendant at the beginning, before you even take off, she will come and she will explain all the rules to you, and she will tell you if something happens, a mask will fall, and you put the mask first on your face, and then you put on your children, then you put it on anybody else around you that you can help. And... Well, first of all, I wish that when I started homeschool, that I had somebody telling me the rules and the do's and the don'ts and had told me to take care of myself first. But hey, wasn't I busy enough to take care of three little kids and two churches and a husband and, and the house? And it was a big house, guys. It wasn't this house. It was a six bedrooms, four bathrooms house. Let me tell you, it was a lot to take care of. And we always put ourselves last. We always think that we're not important. Let's just do everything for everybody else. And we put ourselves last on the list. And that is so wrong. See, when I burned out completely and I end up in and out of the hospital and then the last time in critical care, paralyzed from head to toe for three and a half hours, all that kept coming to my head was, if I die now, who's going to take care of my children? If I die now, who's going to take care of my husband? If I die now, you know, how are they going to be financially? All of those things just kept coming to my mind. And it, it's, it's such a horrible place to be, you know, when, when you get to a point where something happens to you. And first of all, what happened to me happened because I didn't take care of myself. That's plainly the answer. Okay. That's, that's, that's why. That's why it happened to me. I took care of everybody else. I did not take care of myself. I thought I was superwoman and I could do all those million things at the same time. 
and I could lead Bible study, I could preach on Sunday, I could homeschool my kids, even while we were driving, and I, I could, you know, nurse my baby, I don't know, two, three times a night, I could clean my house 11 or midnight, like sometimes I'll leave for church at eight in the morning and I'll come home at 1130 and I'll still have to clean and do laundry and do things and then go to bed and then get up at seven again to go and breastfeed during the night. Y'all know what I'm, I'm talking about? Can I get a witness here? Like, seriously, can I get a witness here that, you know, some of us are living this crazy, busy life where you just feel like you need to take care of the whole world. That Tennessee sounds like me, right? You just have to take care of everything else and do everything else. And then you're like, well, I'll just, I'll just put myself on the corner there. I'll just shovel myself in the corner there. But the reality is that if, God forbid, you burn out. Catherine saying, yes, being there. Sarah saying, I end up at the hospital. Yeah. Guys, it's real. Donna say, amen, sister. We're having church here. I'm glad. But guys, this is reality. This is reality. If something happens to us, then how will our kids be? Right? So if we don't take care of ourselves, who will take care of us? Who will? Right? I wish I could say life is a spa. We can take bubble baths every day and relax with candles. And we can have a massage when we feel stressed out. That's not reality. <laughs> That's not you people. We got stuff to do, but we, we need to take care of ourselves first. So put your oxygen mask first. Um, Self-care is essential. Self-care is not a luxury. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is essential. And when I talk about self-care, I'm not talking about, you know, pedicures and manicures and hair done. I wish. And once in a while, I do give myself that gift of having my, my nails <laughs> done. <laughs> Normally when they're so horrendous because they're so broken right now that I can't stand it. Um, or if somebody gets me. <laughs> <laughs> my husband finds something on Groupon and gets me with Manny and Patty. That that's when I get my stuff done, uh, my nails done. But I'm talking about good sleep. I'm talking about uh, just having quiet times. People don't don't think um, don't see me this way, but I'm an introvert. I am a big time introvert. I recharge quiet, alone. I don't recharge. I don't, I don't like being in places with a lot of people. That's why I love the internet. <laughs> I don't like being in noisy places. I get dizzy even walking into Walmart or a big store like that. I literally, I get dizzy. It, it overwhelms me. Um, I like to be quiet. I like, that's how I recharge. That's how I feel refreshed is when I'm quiet, when I'm alone. And for me, that's part of my self-care. When I wake up in the morning, I'm alone in my bedroom until I'm ready to come out and face the day. <laughs> Literally, I'm not joking. This is how I am. This is how my brain function, my body function. I need to have a little bit of time. I cannot wake up all of a sudden with people just yelling, screaming in, 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 in chaos and I, it does my heart starts racing. I get panicky. I just don't function like that. So we, I think that we did a great job training our kids. My kids know that I need my time in the morning to wake up, read my Bible, pray, listen to some worship or whatever I'm doing, you know, just, just have that slow morning to wake up and get ready for my day. Um, so they get up or uh, quietly, they don't get up early. Sorry. They get up quietly and they will sit here and that's their chance to watch tv anyway so they will not make a big so <laughs> they will sit here quietly until i'm ready to come out of my room and i'm dressed and I brush my teeth and brush my hair and done my devotion and everything and i come out that is essential for me that's part of my self-care i need that i desperately need that to function well and to be better for my kids so 
And when I'm rested, when I sleep well, and when I have my quiet times with the Lord, and I don't feel like I'm overwhelmed with people and, and noise and, and, and all of that stuff and movement, then I'm a happier person. I am a much happier person when I'm rested. Let's just be honest. When we are not rested, we are going to act very ugly. You will be snapping on your children. You will be rude to your husband. Um, you'll be in a bad, bad mood. Mood, Sorry, mood. You'll be in a bad, bad mood for sure. It's because you're just so exhausted. You're so exhausted. You're, like, you're literally just burning the last bit of gas. You know, and, and, and you, just, you have no patience for anything. And let me tell you, when you have no patience means that you have no peace and you have no joy and everything is just chaotic. So do not allow yourself um, to just be on a corner and not take good care of yourself. Do not, do not do this because that is a big, big mistake. So, and I know I have like lots, I know, same year, I need to train my kids to give, to give me that space. Lisa, yes, best thing I ever did was to, you know, teach my kids, listen, when you get up in the morning, uh, when mommy's still in bed, you know, just keep it quiet. And they know sometimes that I'm, I'm just awake. I'm just there. Sometimes I'm sleeping. And they're okay. They respect that the same way that I respect if they're sleeping. The only reason I will go and wake them up is like it's 10 o'clock in the morning and they have never done this before. Then I'm going to go check on them and say, hey, uh, are you having a growth spur or are you having, you know, you're feeling something you know but other than that that's one of the reasons why you're home we homeschool people we don't need to get up early we can sleep as much as necessary and sleep is super important if you read one of my last blog posts it's all about how sleep affects your learning your kids learning so go to the blog and read that and affects us as well so tatiana knows that if i'm running on four or five hours of sleep <laughs> I can't talk. My dyslexia is like up on the roof and I'm switching words or I'm missing words in every email I send or post, I, I, I post on my Facebook group. You know, I think I wrote the words, but the words are not there. Or, you know, like instead of like writing from, I'm, I'm writing form. And, and it, I, just, I just keep like, everything is just a big mess. Everything, my brain just doesn't work at all. So. Um, Jessica saying, I like to get my eight hours of sleep. I need my eight, nine hours of sleep. If I don't, then I'm a disaster. Um, Tatiana says, especially right now, it's summer, my girl's sleeping and you need to sleep too. Yes, you do. You do. We all do. All right. Point number three. So actually point number one, we're still on point number one. <laughs> point number two. Find your tribe, find your community. Every homeschool mom needs three things. One of them, I already talked about it's quiet time, right? <laughs> we all need quiet time. But we need community, we need encouragement, maybe four things. We need support, we need encouragement, we need, we need community, we need support. I found my best support in our best homeschool moms, our best homeschool moms group. <laughs> I didn't sleep well last night, <laughs> but I've been dying to take a nap today uh, <laughs> to, to recover from my vacation. Uh, we, we need support. We need somebody to cheer us up, to advise us, um, a shoulder to cry when, we, when we're not in a good day, and somebody to pray for us when we're having a hard time, but somebody to celebrate when things are going well too. So find your tribe, plug into your community. You need support. You need encouragement if you want to be the best homeschool mom that you can be. So I'm going to try to go faster because I can do all the same thing, but I'm really glad that I got into the self-care because that is crucial. Okay, point number three, learn to simplify your life. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Uh, I laugh really hard when I see some people posting their new curriculum and there's like 20 different things on their curriculum and I, I don't know if I laugh or if I, if I want to cry because um, I'm thinking here that person will never actually get that done and uh, maybe I should let that person know you know that hey I, I think it's all a little bit too much 
keep it simple keep it simple as much as possible the less the better it is the less you do the more actually they learn because they have time to to process and and really absorb things and you're not rushing through the curriculum because now you have seven more books to go through during the day so try to keep it simple we're going to talk about more a uh, little bit more about that going forward but guys remember the first homeschool boot camp we did the tennis thing and time to explore and research on their own yes yes see like me and my family um like today okay so today we learned about the first emperor of china who built the 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 wall the china wall the wall of china <laughs> anyways so so this emperor uh, he was actually a really, really cruel and bad and killed a lot of people, did a lot of bad things. And this is the emperor that when he died, um, he had, his tomb had like thousands of soldiers made out of terracotta and, and normal size and all their faces were different from each other. And he had like chariots and, and horses and all of those things. So of course, we just finished our history lesson what do we want to do? We want to go and search more because my kids' eyes are like this big and they want to see this whole thing. So you got to allow yourself time and, you know, and space to explore and go deeper into the things that you're learning. So there we go. We went to YouTube. We found a whole movie about this emperor and we watched the whole movie about this emperor and we discussed more about it. So a lesson that was supposed to take 15, 20 minutes end up taking two hours for us. But C had a gazillion of books to get done every day. Then we'll, we'll be rushing and we go like, oh, we, we can't do this right now. We just need to keep going, right? So we did delay our math, which that is going to do with them after I finish this video. But we had a great time and we learned a ton together. So you need to allow that space for that as well. Keep it simple, keep it simple. Um, I want to encourage and I want to affirm you today, what you do is enough. Your kids have plenty of time to learn more. Learning does not only happens during homeschool years. They're gonna keep learning. We just need to give them like the basics and here's what we need to give them, the love for learning. We need to help them to continue to be curious about researching, curious about reading. Once you have given them that love for learning, they are set for life. They were never going to stop learning. They're never going to stop digging in and researching and finding out more and going to different places. My kids learned a ton this weekend at the beach. You know, they saw so many different starfish. And we went to all these places where we learned a lot about their local flora and, and fauna. You know, they're, they're in different birds and the different animals and um, the different, how do you call it like this? We learned about glass sponges uh, on the bottom of the ocean at this place where we were at this, um, not an island, it's like a peninsula. But we've learned a, a lot about the history as well. We learned about the smuggler, like the, the rum smugglers that brought all the rum to the, to the coves and stuff. And we learned about this Spanish explorer who was the first one to come to the Sunshine Coast. So we're learning. Everywhere we go all the time, we're learning. And kids get curious, they ask questions. So don't complicate things. Do not complicate things. Do not buy too much curriculum. We'll get there. But simplicity has become my best friend in this past homeschool years. And we'll continue. And everything, actually, simplicity has become our best friends in life in general. Um, like housing-wise, you know, just living in an RV, living a simple life, um, not having car payments, not having credit card payments, not... You know, being free of this consumism, this, this materialism that it's so slavery, right? Um, and even with our homeschool curriculum, last year, I did not buy any homeschool books at all. I used what I had and I used things that were given to us 
and I used things that I got in our homeschool sale because at the end we got a lot of swaps going on. So we sold what we were not using anymore and then we got together just a few things. I didn't get much at all because I really wanted to get rid of stuff. Just a few things that we could use for those years and mostly they were audiobooks. They were Jonathan Park audiobooks of every form that we wanted um, and a, a few other things that we got. But we just kept it super simple. And I felt like this year we have learned so much more than we did the year before. Because we had time to explore. Time to go to the library, get bunch of books, and bring it home on certain topics that we were exploring and just read it and have fun. So that was really, really helpful. And, and that really goes with number four. Stop adding more curriculum. Stop, stop, stop. Okay? Just really press the brakes right now. If you're even tempted about buying new curriculum and you already bought what you want, here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my mistakes with you. Um, so before I simplified my curriculum this past year, do you know how many science curriculums I had? Three. I am not joking. I had three science curriculum. And I was like sure I was going to use all three of them I had a plan and on paper worked amazingly and I was going to just use all three of them seamlessly <laughs> I never finished one. Oh, I ended up having a little bit of this little bit of that little bit of that and I never finished any of those so in last year so this year I was determined. I know we're planning God lots. It's so true, Sarah. And so this year, I was determined I wasn't going to buy any science curriculum because <laughs> I'm all or nothing, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That Jenna's saying she, uh, she did not buy anything this year at all. Okay. So just you can see, I'm so like that. I want to do it all. <laughs> so here's what I, I actually, I challenged myself. And this year, and I think I've said that this a thousand times, this year we did not buy a science book. We bought Apologia in audio. We bought a, we, okay, now you're going to laugh. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. I bought Apologia in audio. Zoology 1, Zoology 2, Zoology 3. <laughs> I did not buy the books. What about the audiobooks? All three zoology. I haven't finished the first one yet. We're trying to finish up now this month, okay? But <laughs> that's a long way for me, people. That's a long way for me. <laughs> and just listening to the audiobook instead of, you know, having to open the book and do the, the notebooking for all three kids and all of that stuff. It simplified our homeschool. It really helped us. It really helped us. And guess what? My kids are learning a lot. They're learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. I've learned about insects and listen, I'm not a bug person. I've learned about like birds, all kinds of different things about birds. And I'm still learning with zoology one, just listening to the audiobook. And we put in the car, we put here and the kids can play, uh, Lego or they can color and they're listening and then once we finish that chapter we just talk about it and um, Of course, I love lap books So I did buy a lap book from the apology of zoology one so we could put together We haven't finished yet, but we have fun once in a while Bringing in the lap book stuff putting over the table when the table is clean <laughs> And putting those pieces together that we've learned about already, right? So our homeschool has like really been a lot more simple than it was before. Like there's no comparison. There's no comparison. And it, it's just like, it's like, and I, I, I've talked to my friend Becky uh, Sailor on, on her, um, Sailor, on her Facebook group about it as well. I feel like what we've been doing in this past year too is decluttering our homeschool. There's no point in keep buying thing and fill, things and filling up the shelves because you have no shelf control <laughs> if you're not going to use it. There's no point, right? If you're going to buy two, three curriculums, here's, 
here's what I see people doing because I've done it. I've done it. So it takes one to recognize the other, right? Okay. So here's like, th this is how I used to be. I get one language arts program, a um, handwriting book, a spelling curriculum, right? A phonics curriculum and a vocabulary curriculum, but I already have a language arts program. So all I'm doing is repeating. I'm, I'm like making my kids do five times what they should do with one book. And, and that's exhausting. And that's frustrating for them. That's frustrating for them. So if you can get one language arts program that already has copy work, already has spelling, already has vocabulary, already has a little bit of writing, already has grammar, phonics, just stay with that one. And this is what we did this year. So there are two grammar programs that I absolutely love. One is called Grammar Galaxy. Love it, love it. My kids actually ask me to read as I read aloud because it's all about teaching grammar, teaching language arts in general, not just grammar, through stories. And it's so much fun. So we do that, we love that, but it's something that we, now we're doing once in a while. We have completed the books, the books that we have already. We've done the curriculum, but we still go back and do as a read aloud. And now I just heard from Melanie that they're having a audiobook of Grammar Galaxy coming up. Don't tell anybody I told you because I don't think I was close to. Okay, anyways, you didn't hear anything from me, but now you, if you heard, you heard. Um, which makes me very excited because my kids were asking, they call her Miss Melanie. They were asking Miss Melanie to create an audiobook so they can be listening to stories. So they're super excited. Uh, the second one, and that's the one that we use this year, it's called the Language Art Lessons for a Living Education from Master Book. It is the simplest curriculum I have ever seen, and it covers everything. Everything is Charlotte Mason oriented, is gentle, it, it covers everything. And I love how scripture center it is. So my kids are, uh, thank you, Tatiana. My kids are um, learning scriptures. They are learning more about God through their language arts curriculum. They are talking about like my daughter's language arts book this year talked about the biblical feast and the Sabbath. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. They were learning about the Feast of Tabernacles. They were learning about, I think, like the Day of Atonement. And, and like, it's so rich and it's, it's getting them to, you know, like know those things and understand those things better. Not that my kids don't know because they grew up doing all of those things because of our Jewish background and because they were born in Israel. But it is way beyond just a simple language arts. Yet it covers narration, copy work, um, vocabulary, phonics, writing, picture study, all in one book. Super simple. Um, the lessons are so short. Uh, this is what Charlotte Mason actually tells us to do, to use short lessons with our kids. And that instead of doing one page a day, my kids do like the whole lesson in a day, right? So it simplifies our homeschool and make things really work best for us. So try to keep it simple as much as possible. All right, stop adding curriculum, use what you have, make sure that, um, you know, be committed to what you have in your hands, but make sure you know how to choose those curriculum. And you guys know that I, I teach that a lot and we're gonna be talking about that on Thursday, how to choose the right curriculum for your family. Not what mommy thinks is best, but actually the curriculum that's gonna work for your children and it will get done because the BAS curriculum is the one that gets that, right? So I do have a little magic formula that I teach. So make sure you guys are at the homeschool, um, in this homeschool boot camp coming up on Thursday. Five, do not overwork your kids. Do not overwork your kids. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. If you have a program that already covers those things, you don't need one book for, one more book for copy work, one more book for handwriting, one more book for spelling, one more book, you don't. You don't, okay? So um, keep the lesson short, about 20 minutes for the youngest. Um, make sure that, you know, they, 
whatever they're doing, they're doing with their full attention. That's more important. That's more important that they are fully paying attention to what they have in their hands and make sure that, you know, like, let's say if they're doing their math and their curriculum, a lot of the math has spiral curriculums will have like 50 fractions, 50 multiplication uh, or, or divisions that they need to get done. If your kids have done 20 well, they don't need to do the other 30. Just move on, move on, right? They don't need to, to, to do all of them. So my kids hate repetition. So if your kids hate repetition as well, I highly advise you to get a math curriculum that is a based on mastery and not repetition because it works much better for my kids. Some kids do like repetition. Okay, number six, don't overwhelm yourself. Do not overwhelm yourself. You do not have to do everything on your own. You can teach your kids to be independent. And the sooner you teach them to be independent, the better it's going to be for all of you guys. The, um, the more relaxing your homeschool will become because you know that your kids are able and capable of accomplishing a lot of the, the things that they do. Like they don't need you to sit next to them if they're doing the copy work. Or even if they're doing their math unless they have a question. But there's a lot of things that they can do very independently and you can help them and you can train them to be independent very early. And I have a set of checklist templates on the blog that I give them out for free. And it was actually, I created to sell those, never sold them, just gave them for free. And thousands of homeschool moms have downloaded, thousands of homeschool moms have, you know, told me that they, their kids love their checklist and they get a lot of things done. Um, I myself, I create this for us. And when we start using those checklists, we got our homeschool time down to almost half because my kids they got more confident and as they got more confident they got more independent and it's it just worked so much better for all of us they know what's coming next so that will remove the whole like you know what am i gonna do now mommy what am i gonna do now mommy i'm waiting for you that drives me crazy when they have a checklist in their hands they know what's what they need to do and the other thing too that i do here i'm going to show you quickly so oopsie so there's no excuses each one of my kids have one of those magazine holders with their books for the day okay so mommy where is my book they don't need to ask me that right they know where the books are they know that each one of their books are in their little magazine holder and all they need to do is take the first one out, work on it, take the second one out, work on it. And that's how it goes. And they follow their checklist for that. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Gotta make things easier for them instead of putting everything in one, you know, like in, in, in one big shelf where they're like, mom, where's my math book? Mom, where's my language arts book? So give them their own little magazine holder, put their books of their day there, make sure that their checklist is in there, or if they use a binder, you can put the checklist on the first page of the binder. So normally I give my kids their checklist every Monday. Every Monday I print in, I print out, so print out a new checklist, put on the front of the binder. Uh, this year they're not even using a binder. And then just give it to them, right? So they can have it. We also have a morning routine. I'm gonna show you, I think I have one here, hold on. Okay, so this one, I laminated, hold on, Ooh, where's my thing, okay. So these ones are also free on the blog. So this one is Hadassah's, and this is her morning routine. I don't know if you guys can see this the right way, but she has her morning routine and she can mark. So I laminated so she can use the, the dry eraser marker. So it has, you know, make your bed, tied room, get dressed, put PJs away, wash face brush teeth brush hair devotional breakfast that's her morning routine do i need to tell her you know go brush your teeth i don't she knows where to find what she needs to get done and she can go and mark it and move on to the next thing 
this works wonderfully guys even like with children with special needs and autism if you can't um if maybe they can't read yet you maybe can substitute for a little picture so you can create your own checklist with little pictures you know of a kid brushing their teeth a kid folding their pages a kid making their um their beds we we've always used little checklists like that um, this is really helpful to train them in good habits, in daily good habits, so they can be more and more independent. Once it becomes a habit, it becomes a habit. That's your goal. That you don't have to tell them anymore, right? Let me see if there's any questions. Yeah. Uh, Michelle is saying, when, when my kids were younger, I would laminate a checklist with two columns. I indicate which subjects they needed to do that day in one column, and the other column allowed them to check it off when they were done. And they loved it. Yes! It makes it easier, it's, it's visual, and then as they do it, they're very proud of their progress. They're very proud of their accomplishment. So, and, and that's motivating for them. That's very motivating for them. So all of those things really, really help, right? Um, let me see if I missed anything else here. Oops, I think I went up too fast. Uh, Tatiana saying, I, I sometimes feel like even my teenagers could use a laminated checklist. Yes, they could. Yes, they could. And it, you, you can still do this. That's why when I created like the different templates, I have templates that are very like for little kids. And I have templates that are more like for teenagers, for little girl, like older girls. And, and some that are like very... Um, like I have this like bends is like green and blue and it could be used by a teenager very, very easily. So you could do those things. Um, what else? Let me get back here to my list. So do not overwhelm yourself. Use checklists. The other thing that I always recommend moms to use is loop schedule, loop schedule. And, uh, we've talked about more that on what I think it was our last homeschool boot camp. So you might want to go back that. Do not over schedule. Again, I talked about that in our last one, so I'm not really going to dwell on those, but do not over schedule them. The best year of our lives actually was the one that we did not put our kids in any extracurricular activities and we had plenty of free time and we had a blast as a family. So what we usually pay a lot of money for them to do like swimming and ice skating and uh, just a bunch of like, uh, classes that they took we did together as a family and it was lots of fun nobody felt like we were too busy nobody felt like we were spending too much money um, they didn't feel over schedule and I was not overwhelmed so tip number eight create margins to make room to breathe that is essential you need to have white margin in your calendar you need to have white space in your calendar you need to have those little bits of spaces where you can be creative you can do something fine you can rest you know but you need to have margin in your calendar um, number nine i already talked about that a little bit but less is better do less but do it well do less but do it well so less is always better i cannot emphasize that enough you cannot do 12 subjects a day. Pick those five that you can, that are non-negotiable. Um, you know, for us, it's like Bible, language, arts, and math. Those three, it's non-negotiable. Okay? Non-negotiable. And then we can either do history or we can do science. I never do both in one day. And I can actually, if we feel like we need to pass on in language, arts, and math that we're behind, or I don't believe there's something like as being behind in homeschooling, but if I feel like I need to press on on those and put history or, in, or science aside for a little bit, I just focus on Bible, language, arts, and math. And then I get a whole week where we do only science. Then I get a whole week that we only do history and it works awesome. For my family we call them like science camp and history camp and it's lots of fun and we just focus on that and we get a gazillion of lessons done all in one week so number 10 
focus on the relationships, not just on the to-do list. Focus on the relationship and not just on the to-do list. Your job as a homeschool parent is also to parent the heart of your children. You are homeschooling as a, a, a mean to um, a meaning to uh, disciple your children, to train them the way that they should go. So focus on those relationships. The heart is more important than the head. And if you want to get to the head, you're going to go through the heart first, right? You learn to engage with your children a lot better when your relationship with your children is at its best, not as at his, uh, its worst, right? Because if you're having trouble relating to your children and you're trying to get them to engage in learning with you, the opposition, the fight is going to be huge. So you don't want that. You really don't want that. And one of the ways that I teach moms to engage with their children is by knowing not only their learning styles, but knowing their love language. What is your child's love language? How do they feel loved? How do they feel accepted? How do they connect? How do they engage? If you know their love language, it will make a huge difference in your homeschool. For example, my youngest, she's highly distracted, <laughs> but she loves cuddles, loves it. Physical touch is her love language. If I want her to get anything done, I just cuddle with her. And I put her in my lap and I hug her and I kiss her and says, let's read a book with mommy. And she reads it. Let's do our math together. Come sit by me. And she does it because that's the way that she engages. My other daughter is words of affirmation. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're awesome. Look at your math. You, you're just like getting this so easily. And, and because I praise her so much, she finished her math like two months ago. That's how she engages. That's how she feels loved. That's how she feels like she is, she can do this. So find out what your kids what, uh, love language is, and you'll see that they will be way more engaged in their um, learning. But again, relationship needs to be the number one. Relationship needs to be the focus. The heart is more important than the head. And if you want to get to the head, remember to go through the heart first, okay? All right. Um, let's go back here to my notes. 11, be a student of your child. And that's just what we were talking about right now. You have an opportunity to know your child better than any other person in this world. No teacher will ever know your child better than you will, and no teacher will ever love your child the way that you do. So absorb, observe, ask questions, tweak your teaching styles to adjust to your children's learning style. You know, if you have a, um, a very task-oriented child, then you know exactly how to get that child to get things done. Give the child a checklist, right? If you have a very distracted child, but that has, you know, their, um, her love language as physical touch, go cuddle and, you know, show that child some love and, and, and just really just capture that heart. If you capture the heart, you capture the attention. So do that. Be a student of your child. And we're going to learn more about that um, this month in the homeschool sisterhood as well. So. If you're in the homeschool sisterhood, you're going to get a lot more from this. But 12, value what they value. Value what they value, okay? Value what they value so they can value what you value. So this is a very important principle, and it works even in our marriage. If we pay attention to what they have to say or what is important to them, they will always come back to us when they have something important to share. If we don't pay full attention, and if we show like we don't care, they will also not care in sharing anything with us. So this is something 
that we're doing today to prepare for the future. But it's, it's, it's very important that everything that they want to tell you about whatever they learn, even if it's not the right time, to make them feel like it is valued to you. That is important. And you want to listen what they have to say. That's so, so important. So remember that we are modeling to our children 24 seven. They're watching the way that we react, the way that we listen, the way that we speak, the way that we care. All of those things are important. So make sure you value what they value so you can value, so they can value what you value. Number 13, celebrate all your accomplishments, big or small, all of them in your homeschool. All of their accomplishments need to be celebrated, deserve to be celebrated for their sake and for your sake. So you guys can actually see progress. It's so good when we see like a little bit like, hey, you finished a lesson. Wow, that was awesome. High five. Celebrate it. It is a big deal. You know, don't come and crush their hearts and say like, finally, after three hours, you finished that page. No, celebrate it. Keep it uplifting. You know, keep it praiseworthy. Just keep in a way that it's, it's going to help them to, hey, you know, it feels good. To finish a lesson now i'm going to continue to finish more lessons so and it's super important that you celebrate number 14 i love this one write little notes to your children when they're not expecting when they do something well done put a little sticky note on their books when they're not expecting to find there like when you tell them to go and open their language arts books stick a little note in there and just say hey i love you i love what you wrote about dinosaurs and like something that they are not expecting, do this for them. Like they would get so excited about seeing the little love note in their book. So that is like my youngest does that for me. She gets little notes and I actually had it here. I put, I took it off and put it in my bag, on my purse. But on Friday when I, we were on vacation, but I was still working, she came and she put two sticky notes on my computer for me. And where did she get that from? Well, I do the same for her. So she put this little cute sticky note saying, you know, I love God and I love my mom. And the other one said like, oh, I can't believe, I can't, I can't remember, but it was something like, you know, um, I love, something about I love mom. I need to see it's my birthday. But she came and she, she uh, stuck it on my, on my computer and it was like so cute right? It motivated me, encouraged me. And I hugged her and I kissed her and I gave her attention. And I told her, I'm sorry, I'm working today. I wish I was not, but tomorrow we're going to go to the beach. It's going to be lots of fun. So those little things build connection, build a heart to heart connection with our children. Again, the heart's more important than the head. That's how we connect and we engage with them. Uh, have a tea party. I love having tea parties once a week with my kids. My daughter made me tea today and they um, made Ryan and I tea for our anniversary. So again, we're modeling to them when we do something to celebrate their learning with a tea party, then when we, Ryan and I are celebrating something, what do they think about doing? Let's have tea, mom, and we're gonna make tea for you and daddy, you know? So do little things like that. We use tea parties, like the, we call it poetry tea time. We read poetry, we read, read a lot of books, we listen to an audiobook together, but it's lots of baked cookies. It's lots of fun. It's lots of fun. So we need to add more fun, uh, more things like that. Uh, 16, read aloud. I know this is like super long, guys. The list is long, but we're getting there. Number 16 is read aloud. Read aloud has so many positive benefits for children. All the way to high school. Should you read aloud to your kids that already know how to read on their own? Yes, absolutely yes. It is amazing for them. Uh, read aloud builds vocabulary. It builds them love for reading, love for learning. Uh, they explore new adventures and, and like, it's so good for them. If you're not following Sarah McKenzie at the Read Aloud Revival, follow her because she is the person to go when it comes to read aloud and she would she shares so many benefits of it and i had a privilege of meeting her personally this last time i was down in california and chat with her and it was so good i came back full of ideas 
on how to add more read alouds to our homeschool, even though we do a ton of read aloud and we do a lot of audiobooks. And by the way, audiobooks are not cheating, okay? Audiobooks do give the same benefits of reading aloud to your kids. So you can do that too. If you don't have the time to sit down with a book open in front of you reading, then put audiobooks on and it will actually have the same benefits. So read aloud are awesome. I'm going to share with you guys a blog post that has um, where I share all of those tips with you guys, but also has lots of links and lots of ideas, great books for families who want to start reading aloud or want to learn more about reading aloud, or even some really good read aloud for children, read aloud poem books. So it's all going to be there. All right. Whew. There's a bunch. I don't think I'm going to do all 30 today. I'm just going to pick my main important, important ones. And uh, so I'm gonna just jump to this one here. So number uh, number 17, hug more your children, have more physical contact with your children. Super, super special, especially for those who physical touch is their love language. Number 18, praise them often. You're supposed to praise them, I think five times more than you're supposed to rebuke them. Praise them always a lot more than you rebuke them. And you will see them growing and learning and changing for better. Number 19, when everything gets stressful, close the books. When everything gets stressful, close the book. If a child's having a meltdown, it's not time to continue the lesson. It's time to paint the heart of the child. If chaos is happening uh, for some reason, a child is fighting with the other and don't just start to scream louder than them and just make the chaos bigger than it is. You know what, guys? Let's go outside for a little bit of time and let's run outside. Let's go for a walk. Just close the book. Go get some fresh air. Get out of that bad situation. Get them distracted. Even if you have to, you know, go for a little walk and put a little movie on for 30 minutes, um, Jelly Telly, Right Now Media, whatever it is, Pure Flicks, just until that dust comes down and and the calm comes back but don't try to force and continue the lesson it's not going to happen it's not going to be pleasant pleasant it's, it's not going to be beneficial to anybody everyone's going to be stressed out and you are going to be more stressed out than all of them together believe me right we know how it works and then the husband comes home and you are going to have a big face and you're going to say, here are your children. I'm out of here. Just leave me alone for five minutes. <laughs> Anybody else with me? Because I know I'm not the only one who goes through those things, right? Like when you say like, here are your children, <laughs> my husband knows. He knows the face when he walks in. He knows the face. So try to close the book try to do something else you know even if you just let them kill themselves and go take a shower so you can keep saying <laughs> no i don't do this but yeah i'm telling you if you have to if the situation is that bad one of you needs to calm down and keep the sanity okay <laughs> one of you needs to calm down so there we go that's the idea um, number 20, allow some fun in your homeschool. You need to have fun. You need to have fun. Charlotte Mason talks about that. One of her quotes, she talks, if, if mothers could learn to do for themselves what they do for their children, and if when those stressful moments come, they would just go out and play. They would just like put everything aside and go out and play and go out and have fun. We need that. It's not just for our children, it's for us as well. We need to allow space for fun in our homeschool. And, and, and that's when you're bringing the board games. And that's when you, you know, you just do something fun, go outside, go do a race with them, go, go for a nature walk, go do something that is enjoyable, that is fun, that is, it's relaxing. But we need to do this. Go read a book that you guys love reading and you laugh about it. Like when we were reading, um, what's the name of it? Oh, 
goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of it. Mrs. Piggy Wiggy? Is that the name of it? I forgot. I think so. Um, we just love listening, to, uh, reading those stories and laughing so hard. But they were all to teach good lessons to the children when they did wrong things. And yet they were hilarious. So they were great books for us to read together. And it was always fun. That's what we did for fun. I think it's called Mrs. Piggy, Piggly Wiggly, or forgot the name of it. You guys know what I'm talking about? The one that will go around the neighborhood fixing all the children that had problems with different things? That the moms will, will bring the kids to her? We had, we have a bunch of those books and then we stopped buying because some of the newer versions were actually not good. Not good, I'm telling you. Uh, but they were super fun. All right. So number 21, your calendar is yours. Start your school when you want, end your school when you uh, want. If you want to do four times, like four, um, homeschool four times a day, four, times a day, four days a week, don't homeschool four times a day. <laughs> I think I need coffee. I haven't had coffee in a long time. Okay, so if you decide that you're going to homeschool four, four days a week, or if you decide you're going to homeschool five days a week, if you decide you're going to homeschool three days a week, your calendar is yours. Do whatever you want. If you think that uh, homeschooling year-round is better for your family, go year-round. That works for my family. If you think you need to follow the public school calendar so your kids are free during the whole summer, go for it. Go for it. You don't need to copy anybody else. You need to find what works best for your family. If you want to do the sabbatical homeschool year, which you, work, you homeschool for six weeks and stop on the seventh, then homeschool on the six weeks, stop on the seventh, you can do it. You can do it. So it's yours. Find what works for your family. In Brazil and in South Africa, school goes from February to December, right? And I know we have some South Africans in our group as well. But that's how I did school for us, started in at the beginning of the year, ended at the end of the year. That's what makes sense <laughs> in my mind. It, like your calendar is yours. Do whatever you want. So don't feel like you need to copy anybody else. 22. Now I'm going to say this. And I hope you will get it once and for all because I got it and I'm so much more relaxed now that I got this. You are not behind. You are not behind. There's no such a thing as being behind in homeschool. There are children that have a, they are fast learners and there are children that are slower learners. And what you're doing in your homeschool is allowing them to learn according to their own pace. So if your child takes a little bit longer to learn certain things, it doesn't mean you're behind anybody. It means you are exactly on the pace that you need to be so your child can fully learn that until he moves on or she moves on to the next lesson. So stop comparing your child with somebody else's child. Stop comparing yourself with, with some other homeschool mom. Stop thinking that you're behind because somebody else's kids is five lessons ahead or 10 lessons ahead than you are right now. Look, close your ears and go like, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You do not want to rush a child that is not ready to be 10 lessons ahead yet. It's better for you to stay where you are and move little by little with, along with your child on their own pace, right? Sarah's saying we're not cookie cutters. I always say that, Sarah. We are not cookie cutters. Hey, that's the reason why we're not in public school. I don't want my child to be the, you know, an average child. My child is not a cookie cutter. And my child will have a different learning style, different learning pace than other children and that's absolutely fine absolutely fine so 
don't torture yourself saying we're behind we're behind i know mrs piggle wiggle i know but betty mcdonald i know debbie thank you i was like yeah i was trying to remember i'm like okay mrs piggle wiggle piggle wiggle <laughs> i love those books but again i i was warned about the newer ones that came out that were not good it had some stuff on it so but the older ones are awesome. They are lots of fun. And the kids actually learn a lot of things about their behaviors and how to fix those things, reading those books. Don't say thanks. I needed to hear that. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Stop comparing your children. Stop comparing um, yourself or your homeschool. It's just not worthy. It. It's going to make you miserable. It's going to make you fail big time. Um, not because you're not there. It's because you're dwelling on something that is not true, right? I was watching Andrew Pudowat speaking last year, two years ago, last year. I think it was last year too. My kids went to do a uh, live workshop with him. And, and afterwards he had, um, he did a talk for parents brilliant talk as usual Andrew Pudua I, I love listen, listening to him if you guys are not familiar with Andrew Pudua from the Institute of Excellence in Writing I love listening to his wisdom he was sharing how his wife came to him and said she wanted to assess the kids and he said why would you do that she said well I want to know where they are and he said they are exactly where they're supposed to be you know and the reason why he wasn't keen in assessing his kids at that point where they were was that he knew and he told his wife that either they're going to be way better than you think and you're going to be full of pride or they're not going to be where you thought they were and that's going to make you feel down. And he said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. When we assess our children, I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages. Um, if you hear one negative thing, it's going to throw you off. And you're going to start believing in a bunch of lies in your head, like you're not doing enough. You're failing this thing. You're failing your children. Your children are not going to be as smart as they should be. And it's just going to open up a can of worm and it's going to open up an opportunity for the enemy to whisper lies in your ears. So think about that. Think about that before you come up with, you know, the idea of let's see how my child is doing. Hey, if your child's finishing all their books and you're testing, like you're, because you don't need to take a test. You're testing them as you watch them answering questions and now they're, they're doing their writing and their reading or whatever, you know, why are you going to compare them? So be, be, just be aware of those things. Be careful with those things. I'm not completely against um, assessment because I do assess my kids once in a while. Andrew Pudua from the Institute here. Andrew Pudua. From AEW. He is great. I, I really love his wisdom. Um, love listening to his talks. He has a great talk on listening, speaking, reading, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And, and how they're all interrelated. So good. Oh my goodness. That one put me at ease when my, my son would not write anything at all and he just kept telling like okay press on on the reading because it's all interrelated so if they're not writing just keep reading and then the writing will come and the speaking will come and the listening the listening is it's like the reading you read they listen all of those things are building up communication skills and it's building up the confidence that they need to write so very very good that's another conversation for another time all right so 22, um, you are not behind 23. Don't fall into the, the comparison trap. We just talked about that. I don't need to talk any more about it. Don't fall into the comparison trap. 
when you um, start feeling like you're behind and start comparing, then you will just gonna put yourself down. Uh, 24, take a homeschool break once in a while just because. Just because you need it. Just because there's a holiday. Just because. Don't be afraid of taking a break when you feel like it, this is being stressful for me this week. I just need a few days off. So you can reevaluate, reevaluate your homeschool or so you can just take naps in the afternoon. Don't be afraid of taking little breaks here and there. I think breaks like really worked amazingly for me. I need that. I need that. So you don't need to wait until Christmas or, or summer to come around and um, so you can take a little break, homeschool break. In fact, you know, <laughs> our Christmas break feels like no break at all most of the years for us. <laughs> it's just like the same. It doesn't change much. We don't have family around. So it's but be intentional in taking breaks and uh, not to plan your homeschool, catch up with a holiday or a project, but just to rest. Don't, don't take a break so you can catch up with homeschool. That's not a break. Take a break to rest. Take a break to enjoy. So I often talk about three R's in our homeschool, and that's rest, reevaluate, and realign. Rest, reevaluate, and realign. Realign to your goals for your homeschool. Realign to your vision, why you started homeschooling. So often when things get um, deviated and you get distracted and you go on a rabbit trail and you just need to take a break and then you can rest. And once you rest it, you can reevaluate and see what's working and what's not. And once you do that, how can I realign to my original vision and goals for my homeschool? So do that. 25 enjoy every minute of your homeschool be fully present put your phone down turn off notifications do not let any distractions come during your time of homeschooling your kids turn off the tv stop spending endless hours on facebook i talk about that so much you guys i literally i need to time myself every time i go on facebook i go like five minutes so i go five minutes at the end of the day, 15 minutes, but I don't go the four or five hours that I used to go before. So watch out how you're spending your time because you need to make every minute count. You need to make every minute be joyful, enjoyable, fully present. Uh, that's so, so important. That's so important. We need to redeem more time than anything else in this life because time will never never come back, never come back. What you missed, you missed, right? And the blessing of being home with our children and watch them growing, listen, in a little bit, they're going to be gone. They're going to be grown-ups. They will have their own family. And you will wish you had just had a little bit more, more uh, little, little bit more of time with them. And you won't be able to. You won't be able to. So make every minute count. Make every minute count. As a mom, not just as a homeschool mom, but as a mom. Every minute is a gift from God. It's a blessing that we have in our hands right now. Right now. Right? So that's so important that we make every minute count. Um, there are a few books that I recommend if you're feeling like you're not where you would want to be and in terms of being a good steward of your time and, and being present in your kid's life the way that you should. There's a few books that I recommend. One of them is called Present Over Perfect. The other one's called Grace, Not Perfection. The Best Yes from Lisa Turkish. I always talk about that one. A Simplified Life from Emily Lay, and that one is basically what we're living today in our lives here. We decided to simplify so we could be fully present with our children. We can have more family time together. Another one that I, that he was life-changing to me was a book called Hands-Free Mama. In fact, the Hands-Free Life and the Hands-Free Mama book 
I gave up having a smartphone for a whole year after I read that book because I felt so convicted, so convicted. And I only got another phone because my husband decided to buy me a phone. And I was really upset when he came home with a new phone because after a year without having a phone, I just felt so free and I felt like fully present. And I feel like I was right there with my kids the whole time. Every time we went to a park or we went to the beach or we were doing homeschool, I never had to look down on anything to read notifications. I felt like I had a lot more time in my hands and I was enjoying life so much more. So highly recommend you read this book. Highly. Hands-free mama. Highly recommend it. The other one's called Only Love Today. And I actually haven't finished that one. Started a few months ago. I need to go back and finish. But that's a really good one too. And with that, number 26, make memories. Make memories. One of the first things that I decided to do when we start homeschooling and well, maybe a little bit later. <laughs> I wanted to at the beginning, but I had no idea what I was doing. It was I wanted to make memories with my kids. So if you go to my blog, there is a post that is called Our Unhurried Home Our Unhurried Homeschool Approach That Make Memories, if I'm not mistaken. That's the title of my post where I share how I've been always intentional as much as I could and much more today than I was four years ago in making memories in my children and just making them learn something that is memorable for them as much as it is for me. So <clears throat> don't just snap the shots to share on Instagram. Instead, capture the special moments to your own memory. Write about those special memories on a journal add the pictures if you want to but the point is start to intentionally make memories with your children as you homeschool them i think you guys have noticed that if you go to my instagram i don't share staged pictures of my homeschool i i i think they're beautiful but i don't think they are real okay I think they are beautiful. I looked at some of Instagram of homeschoolers and listen, there's like uh, twigs and flowers and butterflies and the books are all positioned over this beautiful farm style table. And, and, and their homeschool room looks like it just came out of a magazine. And I think it's beautiful. But let me tell you, I help thousands of homeschool moms on a regular basis, and this is not reality for them or for myself. It's just not. So instead of being worried about snapping pictures to show people how this is going to look like, make those memories in your mind. But you can even snap the pictures, but make sure that you're fully present. It's not just the picture, but it's, it's the whole moment capture and and this is your reality and your real reality is beautiful because that memory is precious to you and it's not just to show something to other people right um tatiana is saying yeah tatiana she found the link there so that's awesome and her real charlotte mason approach that creates memory that's what it's called and we're we almost done Make memories with your children. It's such a blessing to be home with them, guys. Count it for um, as a blessing to be able to stay home and see them growing, see them learning. Don't, don't miss the chance to capture those memories in your heart and in your mind. Uh, 27, laugh with your children. 28, have more fun with your kids. And we talked about the importance of mom having fun. But it's one thing mom having fun. The other thing is mom having fun with the kids. My kids go crazy when I run with them. My kids go crazy when I get in the water and swim with them. That, that is the highlight of their days. What? Mom is in the pool with us? She's not just sitting watching us? That's what they need. They needed to get in the water with them. They need to get in the dirt with them. They need to get, you know, go run and sweat with them. Uh, go ride your bicycle. The other day, I hopped on my son's scooter and I went all the way down to the gazebo by the water in his scooter. My kids were going insane because I was riding the scooter. They thought it was the coolest thing ever. 
guess what? They're always going to go back to that memory. They're always going to remember that because mom was having fun with them. So get down to their levels. Go have fun. 29, go for walks, nature walks, lots, lots of nature walks together. Go explore, go to museums, do field trips, take him out of the house. And, and number 30 is the last one. And this has gone like way past what I had planned. But I'm going to close with this. Out of everything that you're doing with your children right now, creating memories, having fun, teaching them how to love reading, reading books that will change their hearts, their minds, that will make them a better person. Um, all of those things that you're doing for your children, parenting their hearts when they're having a hard time, you know, valuing what they value so they can value what you value and they can always come back to you and tell you the things that are important to them. Above all of those things that you're doing, there's this one last thing that I want to leave you with today. Create a home that you kids will always want to come back to you and will want to duplicate on their own home. So create a home that they will always want to come back to and they will want to duplicate. That home filled with memories, filled with love, filled with good things. You know, wouldn't it be so cool years from now when our kids start having their own babies, when they start having their, you know, their own family, that uh, they will look back and say, oh, you know, I, I just want to do what mommy used to do. And, and I, I went to homeschool my kids because I had the best years of my life being homeschooled and having fun and, and being there with my mom baking cookies and reading out loud. And that's, that's what we're doing this for, right? To create that home that they, they want to duplicate. As you do all of those things, as you serve them, as you love on them, as you teach them, as you facilitate uh, their learning, as you parent their hearts, um, just create that home. I love that book from, from uh, um, Sally Clarkson. Uh, what, what's the name of it? The... Yeah, I'll get it for you guys. I have it. I, I've been just losing my ways today. Hold on. There we go. The Life Giving Home. This one here. The Life Giving Home by Sally, Sally and Sarah Clarkson. This book is all about creating traditions that make memories with your family. And it goes month by month. So you can go like right now, July. You can pick July. And then it's all about July. So because 4th of July, right? They focus on engaging with story and history. And she talks about the traditions that they have during the months of July in their homes and how they learn character through story characters, uh, memorization, historical films, historical travel in different places that they like to visit in the summer during the month, the month of july celebrating independence uh, but that's just like one month okay every single month there's always a holiday there's always something that you can be creating uh memories with your children around those things and i love this because she talks about how this impacted their family to this day that their children are still you know trying to duplicate those same memories with their children now. So pretty cool. All right, ladies, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for being here. I am going to uh, quickly uh, stop the recording so I can get everybody to talk and we can pray together. So thank you so much for watching this homeschool boot camp today. And it's always a pleasure for me to come here and share with you a little bit of what I've been learning with my own experience and learning from other homeschool moms in our community as well. And don't forget that we have our next homeschool bootcamp. And last one is going to be on Thursday and it's going to be early in the morning. You probably got the email and the message uh, from me. 
So don't miss the next one because it's going to be really, really good. I'm excited to see you in the next one too. You're so welcome, Debbie. That's so, I'm so glad that you all showed up. That's awesome. And I'm going to see you on the next one.